Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So today I am going to film a 24 hour readathon. I've been wanting to do a readathon for a really long time because I've never done one before. I was first inspired to do a readathon by other study tubers and booktubers like Ruby Ranger. Starting from tomorrow, I will get up at 6 a.m. I will read straight on for 24 hours and we'll, we'll see how that will turn out. So see you tomorrow morning when we start our readable. Okay, so it is currently 6, 18, I think, yeah, about. It is currently 6.18 and I am going to start my 24 hours readathon and the first book I'm going to start with is The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. So I'm planning to read, okay so this is how it's going to work, I'm planning to read for 24 hours and Every single hour, I'm going to be taking a 15 minutes break just so that my eyes won't be exhausted. And yeah, so I'm going to be doing some updates in during my 15 minutes breaks and we'll see how it goes. So, I've just finished reading my first book. I'm going to save the um, reviewing and my thoughts on this book for after I finish the readathon. Just because I want to ponder over it a bit more and just keep this readathon mainly and keep this readathon mainly on reading so I am going to start on my second book which is The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum finished my second book and now I'm gonna start my third book which is Grand Union by J.D. Smith
so I forgot to update but I finished reading Grand Union and I started reading End of Evanly which is my fourth book so far okay so I've been doing the readathon for 15 hours already and um on to my um on to my fourth book and we will keep on reading good morning so today is the second day of my read form and i am two thirds of my way in and i still have six hours left to go on my readathon because i didn't decide to pull up all nighter and so i am gonna finish my last six hours today and we will see how it goes finished my fourth book and I've still got about an hour and a half until my readathon finishes so I think I'll yeah I think I'll try to attempt another book but I am not sure that I'm gonna be able to finish it in an hour and a half so i don't know maybe i should just pick like a really short book all right i'm kind of leaning between either a farewell to arms brave new world or frederick douglas but i have no idea which one to choose because i feel like I am not going to be able to finish like any of them in like an hour and a half. I feel like I'm just going to spend like the next hour and a half just like trying to decide which book to read. I really want to start reading these two books but I don't think I'll be able to finish in an hour and a half. So I might just read Frederick Douglass since it's shorter and this is probably like the only book i'll realistically finish but i don't know should i should i or should i not should i just read half of it or i already read, read like four books and i really want to finish off with like a fifth book but I think I'm gonna settle with Frederick Douglass just so I can up the book count. a few days after but i just want to go through the books i went through in my 24 hours readathon so in total i've read five books and the books i've read are quite short and light because i didn't want to speed read a really heavy book or one of those longer books there's some books where like 
I just like to uh, like read them slower, just to like take in and absorb the contents more. But then there are some other books which are lighter and like children's books where I don't mind speeding through them and just trying to read them as fast as I can and so anyways let's get started so the first book I read is The Time Machine by H.G. Wells and this is my first book by H.G. Wells and I absolutely loved this book. So H.G. Wells and Juice Wearns were like the forefathers of the sci-fi fiction who basically pioneered the genre. So this is like really early sci-fi fiction and it's just so interesting seeing how far the sci-fi fiction has progressed and the differences of writing about a future world from the Victorian era compared to now when there's like so many sci-fi fictions out there and yeah so especially these days like there's just like so many books talking about a future world like Divergent series, Hunger Games and Maze Runner and there's a tendency to write these future worlds as really dystopic and it's just depicting the human society as progressing towards a negative future where basically the earth has turned into a wasteland and the earth is plagued with war and disease and basically just chaos. Anyway, so it's about a person, a scientist, who builds a time machine like in Back to the Future where he gets to travel to the future and what he finds is actually quite different to what contemporary sci-fi books usually portray because like the society that the scientist first comes across looks quite utopic and instead of like the doomsday dystopia that that most modern sci-fi books depict the world that he comes across is basically a world where people live in such just peacefulness and in fact the world is so peaceful that the people became really naive and they're all in a really childlike state and at least that's how it appears at first but as he stays there longer he realizes that that's not actually true and instead there is danger that lurks in that society and basically the world has the human race has separated in two different races one is like the childlike alloy people who live on the upper ground and they basically live in a world like the garden of eden but there's another group of humans who are known as the morlocks who live underground and they are just basically the opposite of the alloys they are really dark creatures and really beastly natured and wild and so the alloy people always live in fear of the Morlocks and the only thing that's keeping the Morlocks from coming up onto the surface and attacking the alloy is that they are scared of light and so they can't come out into the sunlight so they can only plague the alloy people at night time and so the alloy people are just living in constant fear of the Morlocks. The second book I've read is The Wonderful Wizard of Odds, which is such a cozy book. I've watched the movie a lot of times, but I've actually never read the book, which is 
turns out to be actually quite different to the movie like i feel like i like the book way better than the movie like the plot is way more complex and the characters are also more animated and than the movie which i feel like is more simplified i feel like a lot of the plots and some really interesting aspects of the book aren't like portrayed in the movie and i remember one particular scene which isn't in the movie but i really hope it was it's where um actually they talk about the origin of the emerald city which they've never even mentioned in the movie but basically the emerald city is created by the wizard of odds who is basically a man from Kansas who arrives at odds on his balloon. And why it's called the Emerald City is because everyone thinks he's a wizard, so he makes the people of odds build a city. And then after they built the city, he forced everyone who enters the city to wear a pair of glasses and the pair of glasses basically gives everyone who enters the city the delusion that everything in the emerald city are green and because they're always wearing their glasses they everyone just assumes that everything in the emerald city is green and so it's called the emerald city but what they actually realized was that things in the emerald city isn't green it's just the glasses that's making them see things green so so that's such an interesting concept i can't believe they didn't portray this in the movie next book is grand union by zadie smith which is a short story collection and I've picked this up because I've read White Teeth by Zadie Smith for my high school literature class and I absolutely loved White Teeth so I decided to read Grand Union just to read more of Zadie Smith's works and I didn't like this collection of stories as much as I liked White Teeth because White Teeth was just like hilarious and explores a lot of post-colonial issues basically the life of immigrants coming into Britain in the late 80s and 90s and Grand Union explores similar issues of post-colonialism and sense of identity and belonging and but i just didn't really connect with any of the stories in this collection like maybe it's because i speed read it i i need to like reread it and just spend more time with it but yeah this book just didn't echo much with me next book is end of Evanly. i've just always loved the end series like i've made a goal to read the end series across my lifetime so i get to grow up with n because the end series covers a long time in the lifespan of Anne shirley beginning with end of green gables where she's 11 and she first came to Green Gables and it goes all the way up to Rule of Ingleside when she is a middle-aged woman and so I decided to read each book across my life correlating to basically the events that happened to my life and my age as well so I've read the first book End of Green Gables when I was just starting high school and I've read End of Everly and End of the Island this year which correlates to her growing up and entering college and I will wait 
until I finished uni and got in my first job before I read the next book in the series, which is End of Windy Pointless, where she becomes the principal of a school after she's graduated from Redmond College and gotten her BA degree. But yeah, End of Emily is just great. And last of all is the narrative life of Frederick Douglass, which is a biography of Frederick Douglass and a book I've been meaning to read for a really long time. Because last year I've read some of Frederick Douglass's short stories, part of my American classics degree, but this is probably like the most famous work of Frederick Douglass. I've never read it, so I decided to read it and it basically just details his life as a slave and how he got free and escaped slavery to become a free man. And this is a really short story, like this only I think a hundred pages? Yeah, like this only a hundred pages. And so it took me a really short time to get through. And yeah, it's really interesting read. Like it details the abuse and mistreatment of slaves by the slave owners in the plantations before the Civil War. And it basically just explores the negative ramifications of slavery as a concept as well and how the and the negative effects it has on both slaves and slave owners and everyone basically everyone who lives in a slave society is impacted by the nature of slavery. The first owner he gets sent off to in Baltimore, Captain Lloyd. His mistress grew up in a society where there's no slavery so she's really unfamiliar with the concept of slavery and at first when she came across Frederick Douglass she was really uncomfortable at just how obedient the slaves were and it made her really uncomfortable and she was just extremely nice to all the slaves and she actually taught Frederick Douglass how to read until her husband intervened and told her that it was dangerous to teach slaves to read because an education basically leads to liberation but after living in a society where slavery exists his mistress became more and more accustomed to slavery and she also became more and more cruel and more resembling the slave owners around her. So, so that's all the books I've gone through over my 24 hour readathon. And that readathon was such an exhausting experience. Like, it was the first readathon I've read, but I didn't anticipate how exhausting, how tiring I would be by the end of it. Like, even though I didn't read 24 hours straight, I gave myself a 15 minute break in every single hour. But even still, like, that was like so tiring. And especially since I'm filming the readathon, so it's not like I can just cheat. I actually have to like be there and read like exactly on the dot. Whenever my break finishes, every time a reading session ended and a break began like I was just like so relieved tiring as it was it was also a really rewarding experience I got through five books in one day that's the most number of books I've ever gone through in any one day of my entire life and what I found after doing the readathon was that it got me into a reading mindset so before like doing the readathon like I have to make a conscious effort to 
pick up a book and read whereas after we the readathon like i sort of just like entered this reading mindset where like i basically just have a natural impulse to read and so it becomes like so much easier when i start reading a book so afterwards where like i can just pick up a book and go straight into the reading mindset and be able to comprehend and just concentrate on the book better whereas like before the reader form like i have to have like this transition period to actually start getting into the book so that was nice and that's all for the video for today i think i'll decide to make this a ritual so in every single like hmm Maybe not every single month because it's a bit too intense, but I'm deciding to make a habit, a ritual of re doing a 24 hour readathon on every 31st day of the month. So every two months. And so by the end of this year, I would have done six readathons and i am um, yeah i'm just excited to see how that would turn out and what i would gain from that experience and i'll be recording filming every single readathon i do and uploading it on youtube so you guys can check out and so that's all for this video thank you for watching and see you next time